Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride, and welcome to our CarTech how-to video on the 2023 Honda Pilot. This is the Trail Sport trim level. Today, I'll be covering the driver's information and infotainment screens. I'll do a general overview, show you how to access information, and do a deep dive. Let's get started. Today, we're working with our friends at Luther Mankato Honda in Mankato, Minnesota. All right, so man, excited to be finally in this and to be able to take a look at it. So on this trim level, uh, the dashboard is half digital, half analog. So the speedometer is analog. Um, everything else to the left is digital. Now, when you get up into the uh, I believe touring and elite, you get a full digital dashboard. Uh, for sure, on the elite level, you do. Okay, now. Uh, over on the left, you know, you've got your RPM gauge, and then you've got a bunch of configurable information that you can change from the steering wheel controls uh, inside the RPM gauge. And then you've got some information in the middle, and then, of course, the uh, analog speedometer. Down below, of course, you get your fuel gauge, you get your outdoor temperature, your uh, odometer, and your gear selector, as well as a clock, and an indicator that your safety systems are on in the green icon down on the left, and then your auto start stop. Uh, defeat will show up if that is turned off. Uh, now, uh, to control the uh, information in the driver's screen, you're going to use two buttons on the left, and so they've really simplified this. So you got a home button, and then you've got this rotary button you can go up or down, and you can push, and that's it. So, I'm going to hit the home button for a minute, and you're going to see all the different things here that we can go through, and I'm just rotating this knob. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start right up here on range and fuel. And to access that, I'm just going to click. All right. So here, we, you know, you can see your range. You can see your average fuel economy. Um, you've got an instant fuel economy bar below. And then you notice that we're on trip A. So if I rotate it, you get to trip B. And you can see the odometer change just slightly when we do that. To reset, you're going to push and hold this to reset. All right. I'm going to press the home button, so there's no back arrow, it's just a simple press of the home button, which is really nice. We're going to look at speed and time. Of course, you got your average speed and your elapsed time since the last reset. And again, this is for trip B. You rotate up, you get it for trip A. Press the home button to go back. We're going to go down. This is where you're going to control your audio from your steering wheel. So to get the source, you're going to rotate up or down. Okay. And... I'm going to press, um, we'll, just, we'll just go to Sirius XM for a minute. Okay. Now, um, to do volume on a media, um, you're going to use this up or down button right here. And then to change channels, you're going to use these two. All right. Let's go back. Go to phone. I don't have my phone currently hooked up, but this is where you'd be able to uh, make a phone call, look at your address book, that kind of stuff. Okay. I'll go down here, navigation. Um, now, for navigation, this just has a built-in compass. Um, we'll see when I connect it to Apple CarPlay if anything shows up in here. Uh, but the infotainment screen itself does not have navigation built into it. Um, what it does have is, is, is a compass. Uh, so, let's go back. And driver attention, that, that's going to monitor you while you're driving. And if it thinks you need to pull over, take a rest, it's going to suggest that. And that's just a little meter that shows you, you know, where you are on that, on that scale. All right, all-wheel drive torque distribution. If you want to have a nice graphic here, you can see that. You can see where the, um, that torque is being applied. I'll press the home button, go back. You can see belts. Okay, so um, this is kind of a neat thing, especially if you have kids. So you can look at this and quickly see who's buckled. Like, I'm in the driver's seat because it's red. Rob's in the back seat. That's red because he's not buckled. Uh, and now he's just buckled. So you can see that, which is really, really nice. All right, press the home button. I'm going to go down here to maintenance. And under maintenance, you're going to just see your oil life. Go back, press the home button, go back. Tire pressure monitoring system. So here you can, of course, see your tire pressure, which I like. I like the fact that the wheels are in green, just, just makes them stick out a little bit more. Safety support systems, real easy right here. So if I go down, you're going to get road departure mitigation. 
and it shows you, you know, kind of flashes the lines on the screen, and tells you what it's monitoring. Here you got blind spot information. Here you have low speed braking. So at speeds of like less than five miles an hour, if it senses something, um, it'll help you brake. Now, this is your parking sensors where you can turn them off. And this, of course, is collision mitigation braking system. You can turn that on or off. Okay, and to do that on any one of these, you just go to it. Like, so here's my low speed braking. If I just click this, it'll tell me it's off and then it will show without a check mark. Uh, definitely would recommend leaving all of those on. But sometimes when you're a, if you haul a trailer, it's nice to turn off the parking sensor so it's not always beeping at you when you're reverse. All right, I'm gonna press the home button. We're gonna go down. If you wanna get rid of like all the content, as much as you can, just press that. And now, eventually, this that press and hold will, will should disappear. Yep, and you just have a blank screen with the RPM. Okay, just a little cleaner look. If I press and hold this, if you watch the digital speedometer in the middle of the screen, I just change it to kilometers per hour. And if I press and hold again, change it back to miles per hour. I press the home button and go down. Um, this is the only place you can adjust the brightness of the screen. So there's no physical knob, but you go in here and then you can just rotate down or up to make that change. And then just click this to set it. All right, back again. Gauge display settings. Let's click on here. And you rotate down here. So these are the screens that I've been flicking through, but you can turn, decide to turn some off or on. Like the first one we saw was range and fuel. If you don't want that to show up, click there, take the check mark off. It will not show up. Okay, so you have all of these that we're going currently going through. Um, Seatbelts you can't take off. Maintenance is, you know, those two are, are on all the time. Safety support, anything that's grayed out is constantly on, right? But at least they're showing them to you. The ones you can take off are in white with a check mark. All right, I'm going to press this button. We'll go down to warnings, which is our last one. And if there's any particular warnings, low windshield wiper fluid, uh, oil change needed, those kinds of messages will pop up there. Okay, now. If you look at the, the middle of the screen here, because that's it for the RPM gauge area. Um, if I turn my cruise control on or off, you're going to see I get a little um, cruise control icon there. Um, I think I actually have to be, yep, I have to be actually moving for the lines to show up here. There's my there's my lane keeping assist that just showed up. Um, and then there's my gap setting. Right there. Now, if you're actually driving, it shows you a little icon of a car. All right. So we'll put that back in park there. Um, all right. So the only other thing I'll mention on the driver's area is that you do have a heated steering wheel button right down in the middle. And then on the right stock on the very end, you have a camera button. All right. That's it for the driver's information screen. Next, we'll move over to the infotainment screen. Now, over on the infotainment screen, uh, the Trailsport has the 9-inch screen. Now, models below this will come with a 7-inch screen, but this one, the Touring, and the Elite all have this 9-inch screen. Now, it's interesting, and, and I really like it, but this used to be a touch button. This is actually this, this, and these are actually physical buttons that you'll depress. Uh, which is nice. You have a rotary for volume and a push for power. So the system itself uh, has uh, nine speakers, 245 watts uh, in the amplifier. It has AM and FM and HD radio. It has Sirius XM, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Bluetooth, USB, and auxiliary inputs. Uh, of course, it has a Wi-Fi hotspot that you can set up through AT&T. That is going to be a monthly uh, bill, though. Uh, you can also hook up your phone as a hotspot. But it has another feature that's really nice, and that is as you go through the drive modes, once you get to a trail version, the cameras come on automatically. So let's start by uh, going to the media. So I'm going to go up here to Sirius XM. And, you know, this is set up like we've seen in other Honda systems. It's very, very nice. You got your channel buttons down here. Um, you got category buttons right here. Play pause button right here. 
you want to see a channel list there and there, you can go to more. Okay. So hit the back button here. If you want to make a preset, you just pick a station and then you click and hold. And there's your preset. You want to see more presets? You can keep scrolling that way. Now, I believe every time you add one, yep, it gives you a new blank one. So it keeps adding a blank one for you. And then these three dots show you how many preset screens you have. And then if you go to settings, you have some other Sirius XM specific things like tune mix, tune mode, that kind of stuff. But that's, I'm not going to go through all that, but that's where that is. All right, we'll go back. Sound. Now to adjust sound, you're going to go right in here. You go to do bass and treble. Uh, you can take this and click, but like in the newer Honda Link systems, there's an indent. And once you get to the middle, it stops. So you got to let go of it, pick it up, and continue. But it does allow you to nicely center it. You can also use the minus and plus buttons. All right, we'll go back one. You can see the balance and fader there. That is just a nice quick drag, although you can use the buttons as well. Speed volume compensation. So if that's turned on, the faster you go, the little noisier it is in, inside the cab, although it's a very well insulated cab. Uh, but it will basically pump up the volume a little bit so that it stays the same in your ear. And when you go slower and it's quieter, it'll lower the volume. The whole idea is that it's going to sound the same in your ear no matter what you, how you're driving. Right, the back button here, we're going to go back again. All right, and that's the basics of Sirius XM. So, um, Honda gives you several ways to change sources. Down here, I could go to FM. I'm just going to go to audio source up here because I want to see a list of them. And so, here we go. So, I'm going to go to FM quick. All right, so you're going to do the presets the same thing. You're going to find a station, click and hold, and there you go. And then it will give you the new blank one. Uh, you can seek there. You can tune uh, a station specifically right there. You can scan, you can look at a station list. Um, you got sound settings right there, just like you did in, in um, uh, Sirius XM. You can turn the HD radio to auto or analog only. Okay, If you're analog only, um, it's not going to tune to um, HD radio stations. And basically, HD radio stations, uh, what they do is they're going to give you a, a signal that connects to your vehicle for a longer period and a better audio quality. Um, all right, so let's go back here. I'm gonna quickly go back to audio source here and go to AM just to show you that it's the same setup and that's really nice that they do that. And we find that in all modern vehicles, but AM, FM, Sirius XM are all set up the same way. It is interesting that Honda chooses to include AM radio. And I only say that, I'm not knocking AM radio, I'm just, it's interesting because we've seen a number of newer vehicles come out that don't provide AM radio at all. It's not even an option. So nice that they thought to include that. All right, so that is uh, basically all of your audio except for your phone. So that would be under Bluetooth audio. So I'm gonna click that. So I'm gonna click there and I'm gonna say connect new device. Then I'm just gonna go onto my phone, go into my Bluetooth settings, make sure the Bluetooth is on and scroll to the bottom of the list that are connected and look for Honda Pilot. I'm gonna click on that. And it comes up with that same number on my phone. I'm gonna click pair on my phone. And then it wants to know on my phone if I will allow contacts from my phone and favorites to sync. I'm gonna say no, but if it's this for your car, you would wanna click allow so all your contacts are stored in the vehicle. All right, so here we go. Now, right here is where you need to pay attention to when you're setting up for the first time, okay? So it's asking me, do I want to use the Bluetooth audio and Bluetooth phone or Apple CarPlay? Now, if I hit connect right now, Apple CarPlay will not function. But I will get Bluetooth audio and phone. However, if I click Apple CarPlay, these become unchecked and I can hit connect, which is what I'm going to do because, um, yes, I would like to enable that. And then on my phone, it comes up with a message saying, you know, do I want to use a CarPlay with that? Yes. So now I can shut my phone off. 
put it on a wireless charger. And there we go. CarPlay starts. I'm just going to no for right now. And here we go. So, uh, this is the phone screen. And, of course, you have recents, contacts, keypad, voicemail. But anytime you touch your phone icon, it's going to go to Apple CarPlay because that's where your phone is. Um, Apple CarPlay is, a, is an awesome, awesome, awesome little tool. Um, now, this particular vehicle doesn't have navigation, but you know what? Even if it did, chances are if you're using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you're not using the car's navigation. You're using it off of Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So, for instance, if I click here, I can go to Apple Maps. I could go to, um, let's see, Google Maps. Here we go. And I've got Google Maps right on my screen. I mean, that is just awesome. Um, I can program a route while I'm walking to the car, get in, hook up Apple CarPlay, and um, away we go. So that is just really cool. Um, you've got several things, like I got Sirius XM here, I got Pandora, I've got TuneIn Radio, audio books, uh, text messaging, of course. Um, let's see, Waze navigation. So, I mean, it it's just really neat that those apps will work up here, and I don't have to touch my phone at all. In fact, the voice command button on the left side of the steering wheel will allow me to access Siri on my phone or your Google Assistant if it's an Android. It's just a, you, you push the voice command button, hold it down for just a little bit until you, you hear the, the uh, Siri or Google Assistant chime. Siri, open Google Maps and navigate to McDonald's. All right, and it pops up a couple of choices. I'll go ahead and uh, click on one of them, click start, and there you go. So you even have, you know, your, your assistant to have voice command in the vehicle. So you don't ever have to touch your phone, which is just phenomenal. All right, that's, that's why I love this. So you can always use voice command and, and tell Siri to cancel it, the navigation, but you can also just tap here and click exit or add stop. Right? Just that easy. These icons are your most recently used icons. And we'll go here. In Apple CarPlay, as far as I know, and uh, there hasn't been an update to Android Auto that would allow you to do this, but we get a split screen. So you get navigation, you get a start or cancel button for navigation because it's still looking at that route to McDonald's, and then you have shortcut to media. Now, if I want to go to full screen, I just have to touch it, and it goes to full screen music. This is coming off of Apple CarPlay particularly right now. All right, but just a phenomenal system. Um, the way it works. And I can pretty much guarantee you almost any audio app you use uh, and any navigation app will work with this system. Okay, so I told you earlier that I would just, uh, when I was in the driver's information screen and we came to the navigation um, setting here and it showed us the compass, you know, did it, it, when I started navigation in Apple CarPlay, did it give me directions? And it doesn't. So it just still shows you the compass, but it's a nice feature to have. If you get a Honda with navigation built in, your turn-by-turn -turn directions will show up under navigation. All right, well, let's hit here, we'll hit exit, and we'll go back to home. All right, so let's take a look at the trip computer. Here you have your current drive, trip A, trip B. Um, you can go to settings in either one of these, and you can reset A or B trip or delete trip history altogether. To reset it, you've got three choices. You manually reset it, You it resets when the ignition is turned off, or when the car is completely fully refueled, it resets it. Okay. Back button here, and then you can just delete the trip history completely right here. All right, keep going back. All right, uh, if you got a USB connected in the front, and it does have a USB A and a USB C, the USB A is a 2.5 amp charging uh, USB, and the USB C is a 3.0 amp. Um, let's go over here. All right, so if if there is an update that's available and the vehicle has noticed it, you'll get an exclamation point uh, up on this app. That letting you know that there's an update available okay and then you can go in there um, and if you're connected to your 
uh, home Wi-Fi, uh, and then you can go ahead and download that and update it from there. Okay. Um, clock. So down here, of course, you can adjust the clock. You can see this, this is the nice screen here. Um, you can change the clock face. Let's go back. Date and time, this is where you can change. Now, uh, typically on any vehicle, you can just click the, the actual clock itself and it brings you to this screen, which it does. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's go over here. Um, Honda Link, if you want to download the Honda Link app for your phone, you can do things like you can roll down your windows, you can look at the, the fuel, you can uh, do a remote start. Lots of different features on that app. This is just going to take us to the same compass we saw on the driver's information screen. Uh, if this had built-in navigation, that would be the navigation button. Now, smart shortcuts are shortcuts that are developed over time depending on what you use. Okay? So, if you use something more frequently, you call someone more frequently, you use a navigation address more frequently, these things will start to pop up at the appropriate time. If you always call your mother at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, when it figures that out at 3 o'clock, about 2.55, it's going to pop up and say, would you like to call your mom? Uh, so it's an intuitive system, which is really nice. I, I won't uh, get started on that, but that's what those smart shortcuts are. And then they'll pop up here as a like an icon, too, if you want. All right. Um, let's see. Let's go back one here. Let's go over one more. Uh, you can look at the display mode here. You, you can adjust this. You can also use cabin talk, which if I turn on, it turns on um, a microphone in the front and then it amplifies my voice throughout the entire vehicle. So um, it's a little, there we go. Now, yeah. So if people are busy talking back there, you can definitely grab their attention. All right, let's go back. The multi-view camera. Oh boy, this is a nice feature here. All right, so right now I've got the full screen view, and yeah, this is this is this is the dip you get in the screen caused by some of the the location of the camera. But you get a nice full screen picture. You can get the side by side, so left tire, right tire. You can see my wheels turning, and that's that's why this particular view comes on when you're in trail mode. Um, you get the uh, 360 bird's eye view. If you don't want that, you can just do this. Okay. Which is really, really nice. I mean, that, that is just a phenomenal system. You can also adjust the brightness of the screen right here, and you can turn the whole entire display off if you want. But that is a really cool feature. On the stock on the right side of the steering wheel, you have a physical camera button. So as you're pulling into a parking lot or something, you can just click that button and the front camera will come on because you're in drive. Reverse automatically puts um, the, the uh, rear camera on and you do have dynamic swivel guidelines for that. Now, here I've got kind of a rounded view. If I want more of a straight back view, I can use that one. And this is this is in reverse now. I've got to guess that this is the rear cross traffic that you can turn on or off. Okay, and then you of course can go to a split screen again. So I'm gonna put it back in drive. I should quickly mention this has a couple of additional drive modes. So you've got not only do you have sport, normal, econ, snow, trail, sand, and tow. So I believe that's about three additional drive modes that you get on the on the new pilot. Go back in the park for a minute. Let's go back to home. Go over here. All right, so we've covered all of these. So I'm gonna go back here to general settings and vehicle settings. So we're gonna start with vehicle settings, okay? Uh, so you can set all of these things up here. And I love the way they've categorized them. So driver assist, we had a lot of this in the uh, driver's information screen, but here you've got a, a few more things. Forward collision uh, warning distance. Do you want to be warned a long time before you are in trouble? 
uh, normal time or just before you're, you're in trouble. You can select there. Uh, and these, for the most part, all work exactly the same way. So I'm not going to show you every single one, but you just go into it. And then um, you can turn things on or off, change the distance, uh, change how it warns you. Okay. Um, let's see. Blind spot. You know, do you want audible and visual alert? Do you want visual alert? But this is where all those safety systems are. Okay. And you just click on the one that you want and you can read the um, adjustments there and, you know, change it how you want. Let's go over here quick, and then, and then this is where you reset your oil life. Now you saw that on the driver's information screen, but there was no reset button. You can select engine oil, tire rotation, air filters, transmission oil, spark plugs, engine coolant, uh, all-wheel drive oil, or brake fluid. Okay, you could do anything there, and then you could hit the reset. Okay, so. That is really, really nice. I like it that they include that maintenance in there. All right, let's talk about general settings quick. So uh, under here, under system, you got date, time, language, touch panel sensitivity, which is this panel, um, system volume. So cars beep and talk to you all the time in modern cars. If something is too loud or it's not loud enough, this is where you're gonna go to adjust it. So all right there, nice place to go and adjust those volumes. Uh, of course, you got your language here. We got uh, English, Spanish, and French you can change to. And data sharing. Okay, so right now that's on with Honda. And if you don't want to share any data, you can click off. Okay. Um, let's see. Factor data reset if you need to. If so things just go wonky on your vehicle, well, this is the spot where you can say, let me try a factory reset and see if the system comes back and works. Okay. Home button here again. All right, uh, another spot for sound. Under camera, we have a few additional things like cross traffic monitors off, and that's why when we were in the backup while we were in the camera screen, it actually gave us the possibility to turn that on right from the screen. But you can also just turn that on and leave it on. Under the multi view camera, under guidelines, you can say I want them fixed or dynamic, and you can have them both on. So one set will stay straight behind your vehicle, the other will swivel. You can customize it. I, I like this particular feature, but if you click on this and turn it on, when you shift in reverse, the backup camera comes on. But when you shift back into drive, the camera remains on until you've driven up to about five miles an hour, then it, then it shuts off. If I go to home, last screen I have to go to is the all apps screen. So this is what's showing up in the infotainment screen right now. You don't listen to AM, you can take that app off the screen. For instance, you never use USB music. Well, you can take that icon off the screen and you don't have to see it. All right, so let's say I want my Bluetooth and my Sirius XM and Apple CarPlay all, FM all to be together. If I click and hold, I can go up here. So you can see I can drag it anywhere I want. So I can go there, 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 there. So now if I click here, I can say, I can drag this right up to hide. Notice how the USB disappeared right from this screen. So I've rearranged you know, this whole screen to have what I want on it. Now, in addition to that, Besides the smart shortcuts and uh, I believe the display mode, those stay on, but these ones are changeable. So let's say I want um, cabin talk to be a quick push down here so it's a little closer to me. See? I can put now cab talk stays there, but it also goes here. Okay, so it turns out, I thought these two you would stay there, but they don't. You can change all of these. So that is, you just click done. That's how you're going to customize the whole screen to fit what you want and what's important to you. All right, well, that is it for the driver's information screen and the infotainment screen on the brand new 2023 Honda Pilot. And again, this is the Trail Sport trim level. Hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.